I really don't. My lashes are never on point. I don't give a heck. I don't give a heck. Hi. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> G. <laughs> Hi. Wow, I don't even know what to say. I have I am speechless. I am speechless. I feel like I've gone back to square one where I'm starting this whole thing again. Um I've got a lot to answer for. I've got a lot to answer for. And I just want to start off by saying, newcomers, listen, get relaxed, get acquainted, get your tea and your popcorn. I need you to do just one thing for me, I need you to like, I need you to subscribe, I need you to comment and follow me on all socials. I just want to say that I'm sorry. I'm sorry for not continuing my YouTube. I just kind of left you guys in the lurch and I didn't say anything. I didn't let anybody know when I was coming to gonna come back a lot of you were invested a lot of you have told me like what's going on like we ain't seen a video like i'm a fan da, 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 da. and i've just been like nothing's happened i'm not going through anything i just felt like it's been two years and i've had both summers robbed by this pandemic and when i was doing the youtube things were starting to open back up and i was like hmm do I really, I don't want to say waste, but do I really want to spend my entire summer editing? Because it can be like that sometimes. Because I'm a perfectionist. Well, not kind of, but I'm somebody that I try my best and I'll spend a lot of time on this and a lot of the energy. And yeah, my summer would go in the drain. So I wanted to enjoy. Your girl has a hot girl. Well, I wouldn't call this a summer. This was, I don't know what this was. This was the ghetto. But I enjoyed it as much as I possibly can. My purse has a, a massive dent in it but it's all good the, the point is i enjoyed myself and i took an unwarranted hiatus <laughs> and i'm back i'm back and i'm back with a vengeance so let's get into it i just want to speak to my champion followers thank you so much for your support there are people right let's forget the people no we acknowledge the people that i know i love you guys i i know you and you have to follow me because it's, you're going to be an op do you know what i mean it doesn't cost anything to be kind but a lot of people would rather not be for the people that i've never met physically like physically to dm me and be like I love your YouTube channel. I want you to keep going. It's really good. Amazing. As a whole, anyone that messages me, you don't know the impacts that has on my, I wouldn't say confidence because I'm, I'm quite a confident person, but it does stir me to move forward, to keep going, to see where this goes and to see where this ends up. And I just want to thank you guys, man. You make me so emotional, bruv. But anyways, enough of the soppy stuff. So welcome to the first official autumn episode. You know what? I want to promise you that I'm going to be consistent. I'm, I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to like, no, I'm going to promise you that I'm going to be consistent. But yeah, the first episode today is about why I started a YouTube at 30. I think for a lot of people, they had no idea because I never spoke about it. There's only like a handful of people that knew that I was definitely going to do this thing. Like, I think I can count the amount of people that knew on one hand that I was going to start a YouTube. It was in... 2015, I would say late November, early December. I remember I was in my first job in production and I was sitting on reception. I got this vision that I was supposed to be a YouTuber. I was like, get out of here. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. Shit, I'm saying. Nah, nah. And at the time, I said nah, nah, but it was this massive feel. I can't describe it. Only certain people know what I'm talking about, but it was this massive feeling that kept growing and growing and growing. And so I said, okay, no props. I wrote it down. And at the time it was called Life Works. I don't know where that was going to go, but <laughs> it was called Life Works. And I wrote all my episodes down and I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to do this when I can. I think not long after, somebody I knew started their YouTube and I was like, oh, see, that's what we're not going to do because Jia does not copy people. Jia does not follow trends. Do you know what I mean? Jia does things in her own time. So I was like, nah, it's not, it's not from God because <laughs> why would I start a YouTube after this girl? Like, no, 
So I just kind of was like, no, I'm not doing this. Nah, bye, dead. The feeling kept stirring up, stirring up, stirring up. This is before all the Nella Roses and the Renee's. Those are my favorite YouTubers, by the way. And no, I wouldn't say Jackie Aina. Jackie Aina is a legend. She has been in the game for a long time. I will not even throw her in the same category but I'm saying like I would say the the UK YouTubers weren't really popping that time do you know what I mean but Jackie Anna she was listen she's that's another lane she's amazing but yeah these are the people they weren't even popping that time and I was told like do it and I was just like no I'm not gonna do it I made every excuse under the sun first and foremost it was I was a perfectionist. So I would record it and I'm like, I don't like it. I don't like the way I look. I don't like the, you know, the background. I would make so many excuses. Then my friend jumped on and we did it. Like we made it production wise. Like we paid the money. We even got a makeup artist, which was one of my other friends. And I was still like, no, like I was just making excuses. I was like, no, it's not ready to come out. Da, da, da. And we just never released this footage. And so I just had so many instances. I don't know whether I was fixated on it or whether it was just a strong feeling like, but I would get like the universe like spit out messages like you're supposed to do it like I'd get random people stop me in the street and they're like I love the way you speak have you considered doing a YouTube and I'm like oh for flip's sake like it was actually aggravating me when people were saying you need to do a YouTube you know you're very expressive you're very and I was just like I don't want to do YouTube and then it it just lapped into insecurities I'm not skinny enough I'm not light-skinned enough I'm not intelligent enough I'm not rich enough I started making these ridiculous excuses I started running away and then one year turned into two years and then three years turned into four years and then it turned into five I would say from the minute I heard that message until about March this year yeah was the worst kind of years of my life. I'm not gonna lie to you. Every day this YouTube haunted me. I became so fearful to do it. I would come up with propositions like, okay, you want me to do this? Give me 50 topics. I would get 65. And I'd be, oh, <laughs> I would overflow with ideas. Sitting on your purpose is the most harmful thing you can do to yourself. And I'm in so much regret. And it's not even because of like subscribers or views or nothing like that. It's not even about financials and stuff. I've always come and I've always said, and I hope that I'm come across as a genuine person. I've never cared about, I mean, it's nice. I mean, subscribe and shit, but like, it's never been my main focus. My main focus is to get out quality content, to empower people, to enrich people, to give knowledge. That's, do you get what I mean? And I hope that's kind of shining through. And so I really, really sat on my, my talent. I convinced myself of so many reasons why I shouldn't do this. And it became a five year chase. It's mad because my life reflects a story. I'm sorry to all the non-Christians like, I mean, the Bible stories be banging sometimes. I mean, come on. But when I look at my life, I think about the story of Jonah. Jonah was a guy that God has instructed. God told Jonah to go and tell people in Nineveh that people are moving mad. Like, people are moving mad, you need to tell them because they're too wicked. Literally, it's in there. He said they're too wicked, so go and sort it out. I don't know what was what overcame Jonah, but Jonah decided to run away. Man went on one boat, yeah? He even paid a ticket and he tried to run away from God. If you are a believer, you know how ridiculous that sounds because God is everywhere. God is even in the toilet. I'm not sure I should say that, but I'm just saying, like, he's all knowing, he's all seeing. Do you know what I mean? You get the gist of, like, God. Yeah. So Jonah ran. This is where God has banned him because God caused a storm. Yeah. So the, the, the ship slash boat is just moving to and fro. And all the people on the boat are like, who has caused this? Like, why? Like, why is this boat moving mad? The person that did this needs to come forward. Jonah comes and he says, look, it's me. I'm going to need you guys to dash me over because if you don't dash me over, it's not going to stop. They're like, no, 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 we can't do that. We can't dash you over. A few moments later, we can't dash you over. And then it got to the point where it was getting ridiculous. And they were like, look, man them, we're going to have to dash this guy over. Like, I mean, it's peak they dash him over what happens to him a big fish swallows this guy up swallows him bruv and he's in there and it's peak he eventually prays to god the 
fish kind of just spits him out. He comes on shore, he goes to the city of Nineveh and he delivers the message. Now, when I first heard this, this story and any time I've ever come across this story, I'm like, this is the dumbest story I've ever heard. How can God give you an instruction and you, you literally try to run away from that CCTV? It's like, you're under surveillance all the time. Like, where are you going? Where can you hide? Where did he think he was going? Until the same thing happened to me. I ran away for five good years. The story so mad is that we had Jonah 2.0. Still just, just mm, hard stuff all around me, like, and I just thought, did I just get eaten by a white shark? And, and then I said, no, I don't feel any teeth. And I said, oh my God, I'm in the mouth of a whale. The more I ignored this, the more my life became worse. It became so bad. Everything around me was falling apart. I lost friendships. I lost relationships. I lost opportunities. I lost so much just because I didn't want to make a move on this. And for me, this YouTube is my life puzzle. For some reason, you do things in life and you don't understand, but it's going to lead me somewhere eventually. It's going to get me to somewhere else. It's basically the beginning and it's the piece of the puzzle that I need to get by. Do you know how frustrating it is to have a jigsaw and have one piece missing. That's how I feel. I came across this video that was so significant to me and it spoke about how inside you, it, it was kind of alluding to the point that you will start to decay inside, like manifestations of bitterness and, and just pure depression. And it, like the more I ignored my purpose the more it was starting to like it was like weed that was just you know how weed takes over the grass and how it can just ruin all your crops that was like it for me unused creativity is not benign what is it it metastasizes it turns into grief rage judgment sorrow shame wow but we are divine beings and we are by nature creative Wow. And it gets lost along the way. It gets shamed out of us. It gets, you know, I, I've watched it with my kids. Unused creativity isn't benign. No. It gets metastasized. It does. It's dangerous. I started to see a different side of me that I just did not like. I said, who is this? And it got to the point where I'd pray about it. I'd be like, I don't like this person that I'm becoming. I was angry. I was just upset. People would be doing stuff and I'm like, in, sitting in stagnancy. I was not moving forward. And I'm so grateful today that I took that chance because it means something. People have messaged me and said, look, I've decided to do this or I've changed my mind on that. My whole purpose is not to kind of radicalize anybody, but it's just to get people going. So basically, I'd make all excuses under the sun. I haven't got the right software. I haven't got the right camera. And when I mean, it makes me so emotional. I said I would never come on here and cry. I'm never going to do that. But when I mean... I'd make all the excuses in the world and stuff would just fly out of thin air. I think the most significant one was I didn't have a camera and I was like, God, I ain't going to spend like, I'm, I'm on minimum wage. I'm, I'm not going to spend no money on no camera. And out of the blue, my mum, I don't know, at, at her workplace, I think she won some competition. I can't remember what it was. It was a 500 pound Curry's voucher. She could have said to me, look, I'm not getting you that. But she fully went and got me a camera. And when I mean that camera collected dust, there's so many instances of like, okay, God, if I have money, I can do this. If I have this software, I can, I'll do it. If I get this laptop, I will do it. If I get this job, I'll do it. I lied to myself. And I think God knew I wasn't going to do it. I think what really stirred me forward is it got to the point where I had nothing to lose. God has tricked me of so much stuff that I had nothing to lose. And I thought, you know what? It's now or never. So I just want to end with, I believe everybody on this earth has a mission. Everybody on this earth has a purpose. They have something to fulfill in this life. And a lot of people act on it. But I just want to speak to the people that don't. There's somebody that's watching this and you know, your creativity is beyond belief. You have a magnificent phenomenal idea. You have the biggest venture. You're so innovative and you've sat on it because you care about what people think about you. You're, you're thinking too much about failure. You're so insecure. There's a lot of authors, singers, creators, inventors. I just want to talk to those people, those people alone. 
you need to stop sitting on your talent. I even told, I've told a couple of people, I'm like, you're sitting on your money. It's that deep for some of you. For some of you, it's breaking curses. For some of you, it's breaking chains. It's it's eradicating trends. For instance, one of the um, traits that I've seen in my my mum's side is that the women, they don't really like driving. And I think it's a lot of fear that's over there. And so when I realised that, I said, no, 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 this is going to break right now. So I made sure I, I I started driving. It can be something as tiny as that. Whatever's inside of you, you can't breathe. You can't sleep. It's robbing you of your, your peace. It's stealing your joy. I'm telling you, it will get to a point where it will consume you. It will overwhelm you. You need to move. When people give me compliments here, it's so mad to me because I was like, they have no idea where I came from. They don't know how I worried about this. Putting my life out there, letting people see my transparency. And this is not just a couple of friends. This is the world. Anyone can stumble across this video and make a mockery and laugh and whatnot. Now, I don't give a heck. <laughs> but back then, Lord have, like, I was not for it. Now, I don't care. I really don't care. I'm ready for all the comments. Don't be like Jonah. Don't be like me. Don't have five years regret. And, and I just sat there with my thoughts and I twiddled my thumbs for so many years. And it's my biggest regret. Do not be like me. So that's why I started a YouTube at 30. And I would advise anyone that you can't live, you can't breathe without thinking about this thing that you're supposed to do. I don't know what you're going to do, but start small. It doesn't have to be perfect. Perfect is just a nice word for fear. I was fit. I was fearful. I'm going to put out content that I know is not perfect, but I'm going to keep doing it until I get there. You're not going to be perfect in one day. It's impossible. So you've got to keep carrying on. You've got to be positive. Stop convincing yourself of all these negative thoughts and start the project, start the business, start the book, start the song, record the video, do it. And another thing is don't let like the fact that other people are doing it get in your way. When I started this, somebody else started this and I was like, cool, no problem. Because no one is better than anyone. We're, we're in two different lanes, two absolutely different lanes. Do you know what I mean? So you shouldn't, you shouldn't watch anybody. You don't know where they're going. They might be popping off, but you don't know where you're going either. Why would you pause your journey and let them get all of the success? There's success for everybody. And so this is farewell for now i'll be back with the next episode next week have a great time and thank you for watching no edges bye